You know, guys, uh, Uber in 2016 moved from Postgres to MySQL, and one of their claim as to why MySQL is better was this thing that's called statement-based replication. I remember it was the thing, and and I also made a video about it, talking about these benefits of MySQL right versus Postgres, and then we know that most of these benefits are not really that's very unique to uber's case but this is not out of question this is not the topic but the topic is really i want to talk about is how really bad statement based replication really is i just discovered this really recently when facebook actually upgraded to uh mysql version 8 uh some of you guys thank you thank you by the way uh sent me this article that Facebook is migrating to MySQL version 8 and, and one blip in that article is like, hey, we're ditching the statement-based replication uh, to, to row-based replication, which is equivalent to logical replication in Postgres or streaming replication, I believe. But why are we talking about this? Uh, statement-based replication is, turns out, when I actually looked at the disadvantages, uh versus its advantages like yikesy this is the topic of this episode of the back in engineering show stay tuned and let's have fun uh learning about state in the base replication camera was so bright i don't know why i'm recording this early morning so there is sun uh, what is going on guys my name is hussein and welcome to the back in engineering show and today's episode is statement based replication and and how really nasty it is statement based replication first of all replication is the idea of having your beautiful dmls going to a master node and this master node subsequently push these changes these dmls to some worker nodes thus this is the idea of replication you need more nodes having your data so that you can scale horizontally just saying the master node pushes these changes to worker nodes means that you really don't know anything what you're talking about you're talking abstractly you're like a manager talking about stuff that they don't know or they don't understand right you need to dig deep that's the job of an engineer what does that mean changes right do you actually push the statement the sql statement as a string down the throat of these worker replicas or do you execute the statement in the uh, master node get the wall changes or the redo changes and these just just the changes and then push these changes across the wire to the replicas or do you do this asynchronously or do you do this synchronously do you block the writer until all the rights of the replica succeed or do you just wait right or or, or you fail if any of them fail or or do you like take the maximum so many variables and refactors to do this thing this stuff is not straightforward right yeah, this is where tuning comes into picture. But our topic is statement-based replication, where you essentially uh, copy, you replicate these SQL statements, and not necessarily as a string per se, because dumping a string is not really uh, it's not really a good idea. You parse the logical concept of the statement, right? The 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 actual commands that the SQL statement represents, right? So now I always thought that this is always the superior, better approach uh, because one benefits Uber uh, actually liked with statement-based replication compared to Postgres, which I believe didn't have that back in nine two or nine one. I, I forgot which which version Postgres uh, Uber was on. Low bandwidth. When you send the statements down the uh, wire, the network usage between the master and the replicas are very minimum because you're not sending the actual content that changed if you're executing the statement and it and resulted to a million writes i don't know why you're changing a million things in a in a ltp 
database, but let's say you do, and you shove these million changes down the network. Yikes, a lot of stuff. And, and uh, one of the things that uh, Uber complained about, Postgres, Postgres had this thing that's called write amplification, which I talked about, which any t anything you touch has to touch multiple indexes, updates, all this stuff. So there is a write amplification as a result of a single thing, which doubles this amount or even triples the amount of writes. So there, there is a lot of activity going on. So statement-based replication was the, always the best thing. Yeah, just execute it in the master and then send the statement and then re-execute it on the replicas. And another benefit, this besides the, uh, the, the bandwidth thing, is since it's now it's just another statement, you can just shove it in just like another query. And as a result, you get the multi-version concurrency control because like, hey, someone is executing this query so you have full contents as to what you need to lock what to need what what you need to isolate uh, from this transaction you're gonna respect the isolation levels you're gonna respect the consistency rules you're gonna respect the atomicity you can respect or respect and acquire all the locks that you need effectively for for the other transactions to be in the proper isolation level uh this is as opposed to just shoving the binary changes without any context. When you essentially just write the binary files, that's what uh, that's what Postgres used to do. By the way, it's not. It's just like, hey, these are the changes, right? It's it's a very low level changes. So, hey, these are the changes, and when you do that, you can't. You don't really need know what the context of these changes are. It's like, hey, change these values. Uh, just just shove this page. Wait, wait a second what should i lock again uh, you don't have content as a result you have to block everything it's like wait a second anyone that was trying to write wait a second let me write this page to desk and then i'm gonna do my stuff right so mvcc was very hard in postgres back in 9.5 this is no longer the case MV, uh, now rep uh, logical replication is is a thing built in postgres so no longer a problem right we have this context now that we talked about the good thing about statement-based replication i was really surprised when i read the disadvantage and, and, and i get a good kudos to my sql team for actually being very explicit and explaining how really bad statement-based replication can be that's why facebook is moving away and uh, i i can make a bet that Uber is going to move away from statement-based replication to row-based replication, which is the logical version uh, of of, uh, of uh, uh, MySQL. So, what's wrong with it? Well, let's like the first one. The first thing is when you execute the beautiful, your beautiful statement on the master node, and let's say this is an expensive query you have joins and stuff you're you're reading from other tables or you're updating something but this update is is dependent on some query that you need to execute which is expensive which does a failful table scan or certain index it touches a lot of stuff you're doing so much that expensive so you're executing this in master and you get a small set of rows two or three tops and now all the costs that you just did, you have to do it again on replica one and replica two and replica three. So it is the re-execution of the statement is CPU, RAM, resources, right? Time. As a, if, if it's and as a result, if you're using synchronous replication, then you are blocked as a user. You're just waiting for all these statements to be executed on all of these replicas to get a consist a strongly consistent view right so state of based replication re-execution can be very nasty right especially with, with latency and, and resources and stuff like that all right let's say uh, saying, i saying i can deal with re-execution it's not really a big deal here's another thing when you use functions in your SQL statement, right? Like now, for example, function like now or function like date or function functions that are non-deterministic, right? And let's take now as an example. If you have a, 
a query that says, okay, select from blah, 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 where date equal now, and you execute this on master, and now you have to send that statement down all the way to the replica. The now on the master is different than the now on the replica. That is scary. You're going to get a different result on the replica versus different results on the on, on the other replica versus the master. You get a different result. So if you're updating something based on a value of now, like the date currently, that is going to most of the time give you different results. You don't want that. So MySQL will fix this actually by by parsing the value of now and sending the raw value and so you're replacing the variable the main variable for instead of now to actually the value itself when you see it's now but the problem still exists with all the functions really most of the functions that are really non-deterministic and depends on the environment that you're executioning so this non-deterministic behavior is scary so all of a sudden this leaky abstraction jumps and you front of your face as a developer and you have to deal with it as a developer right not fun another thing is limits so when you don't have an order by and let's say for example uh, i don't know you're, you're inserting something into the master where select by uh, uh and you have an inner select that does a limit like give me first thousand rows update the first thousand rows right when you do a limit without an order by you are at the mercy of how the database decided to store these rows you cannot guarantee the order of the rows in the table in the index yeah they are ordered but in the table not really right the, the entries you cannot guarantee the order of the entries you have to order them by by yourself and we can get to the why the order or not Really, it just depends on the scheduling aspects of the database. Like, even if you insert the same statements at the same time, you can have a lock at a certain time, which have one statement getting delayed after the other, and you get you know you're not gonna get the same order at the table. That's why people use order by, so you guarantee the actual order. So if you're using limit without order by, don't. Uh, MySQL actually gives you a warning. It says, hey, stop doing that. A bad idea. Don't do limit without an order by because I can't guarantee that these you're gonna get the same exact result in my uh, in the master versus the replica, right? This is, this is just different. You're gonna get different results. This is come back to the re-execution cost of this. And uh, another thing is when you when you execute a statement, the database needs to acquire certain amount of locks, shared locks, uh, access locks to to guarantee these kind of values that you're going to get back right that's just how the database works but if you're going to execute the statement and acquire all these logs and then all of a sudden you find out that you're updating a single row and you only lock that row right you have to dispose of all these locks right because hey i didn't really touch any of them i just temporarily locked them because i i thought that i'm gonna need them and I didn't, so I just released them. So you did all this work. So you acquire this lock and then release them back, and then and then you have now one lock, right? Eventually, effectively. Now, and then SQL Server does does something called the lock escalation. It's like, oh, I'm turning a lot of locks. You know what? I'm gonna lock the whole table instead. You can disable that by by the way. So all of this stuff have to be re-executed in the replica as well so you're gonna reacquire all these locks again only to find out that you need only one Ugh. yeah so more locks equal more memory right depends on you how your dbms does your locking and as a result you're gonna you're gonna, you're gonna increase the resources the part of the re-execution thing again yes statement-based replication yikesy man and finally there is another one that i liked is when you do these uh, uh, select for update kind of queries like okay i'm gonna select these kind of rows but i wanted to update them so i want to obtain an exclusive locks to uh did you guys see this this is actually i don't know if you noticed this is mickey mouse band-aid i have a kid now so yeah <laughs> so yeah when when you do a select for update to ex uh, to select certain rows but you want to obtain exclusive locks on these rows right 
And there's an option to say, okay, no, wait. If if the if I can lock it, fine. If I don't, then fail. And this is the scary part. The no wait can actually fail the SQL if it can't obtain the exclu exclusive locks. You can get into a situation where the statement will succeed in master, but it will fail on the replica because of couldn't obtain the lock for one other reason or another, right? You can guarantee that these will be identical, right? Especially if you're executing reads on the other uh, replica concurrently, right? People are reading from your replica, right? So you're just not you're just not leaving it like that. People are reading from it, right? And some situation, if you have an active active cluster, which is very hard to get right, uh, you're even writing to the replica. Yikesy. So you cannot guarantee that the state of the replica is equal to the master. And as a result, fail. If it fails, then it depends on what kind of uh, replication you have. If it's asynchronous, then you got eventual consistency. I don't. I really doubt you're gonna get eventual. You're gonna get weak consistency in this case, unless you retry somehow. All right. If if you have retry in place, yeah, you're gonna get a strong eventual consistency. At the end of the day, everything will consume. If you have synchronous replication, then your write will fail, and and the application have to retry it. All right, guys, that's it for me today. I wanted to talk about statement-based replication. I, re I was surprised reading about that. Apparently, is a, our people are moving away from statement-based replication for these kind of reasons, right? You just you, you cannot guarantee it. Yeah, it's very sexy that it's, it's very slim to send across the network as a tiny thing. But the costs, uh, people are moving to logical replication. Parse the statement, execute it, Tell me what it does, and then replicate that these changes, right? Uh, this is part of the logical replication or raw-based replication in MySQL, logical replication in Postgres. All right, guys, that's it for me today. I'm going to see you in the next one. You guys stay awesome. Goodbye.